Without the Apollo guidance computer, we would not have got to the moon and back. Today, it might be vastly outgunned by a simple smartphone, but that's not the point. It was made to do a job, and the way in which it did it influenced computers for decades to come. It was the first computer to be used in a mission-critical role where people's lives were on the line. If the hardware or software failed, then the mission would be lost, and so would the crew. There is a common misconception that when the AGC became overloaded with information from a rendezvous radar, when it was accidentally left on during the descent and caused the 1202 alarm, that Neil Armstrong took control and landed the lunar lander by hand. In fact, the system was fly-by-wire. Everything the crew did went through the computer. There was no manual override. The landing was autonomous, and it would have landed anyway but it may well have landed in the middle of a boulder field. And that's what Armstrong saw and guided the lander to a clear spot for. The AGC was one of the first examples of space computers, systems that were built for the rigors of space with reliability as its top priority, where there would be no second chances and no one was coming to fix it if anything went wrong. Since then, we have sent space probes to all the planets and beyond landers and rovers to the Moon, Mars and Venus, and even landed on asteroids and comets, and the vast majority have performed their mission to completion, with some of them going well beyond their design life, and at the heart of all of them are computers. Some, like the Voyager probes, are now over 46 years old and still working. So what is the difference between a space-based computer and the ones we use here on Earth? Well, the main difference between using a computer on Earth and in space is the environment. Not so much for the temperature, although that will have a bearing on it because it can be a much wider range in space, but the radiation, which any computer system will be exposed to when it is outside of the protective atmosphere of Earth or high in the Earth's atmosphere where there is more exposure to radiation from the sun and outer space. The radiation effects on computers can be anything from a minor glitch that might not even be noticed, to the blue screen of death, and permanent damage, making it unusable. Depending upon where the charged particle might actually hit the computer or its memory, and how much energy the particle was carrying. Choosing the right computers for space is crucial, but choosing the right company for hosting your website, email and domain registration can be equally important. I've had a website for Curious Droid for several years now, but I have to admit it has been a bit of a pain in the backside sometimes, usually because it's slow, because someone else on the same server is running some really resource-hungry app and dragging down the whole thing. But moving to a new service provider by hand is something that I'm certainly not looking forward to either. But moving the DNS, database, and WordPress site to a new provider shouldn't be a difficult task. And with today's sponsor, Spaceship.com, not only do you get a simple, easy way to migrate your site, but also open the door to advanced features, faster servers, and better prices. Whether you're making your first website for an online presence or upgrading to handle more visitors, Spaceship.com can easily handle what you need. You have control over all aspects of your website and email from Spaceship's dashboard called Launchpad. Here you can access information about your account, domains, email, and hosting. But if you're unsure what to do, you can ask ALF, your own personal AI helper, and it will tell you exactly what you need to do to complete the task in hand. If you need a faster, scalable server, but only for a limited time only for, say, a product launch or an advertising campaign, then there is Starlight, their next generation virtual machines. All you do is select the configuration and the extra power you need, and you just pay for the time you need it for. No need to lock into a new expensive contract. Spaceship.com offers users advanced facilities, ease of use, and great prices. And if you use the link now showing here or in the description below and use the promo code DROID, you'll unlock exclusive deals on domain names, email services, and web hosting tailored just for you. Although we had sent computers to the moon and into space since the 1960s, it was only in the late 1970s that radiation was found to be causing issues within memory chips. In 1978, IBM received reports that some of its 16K DRAM chips were randomly flipping bits with no apparent explanation. 
After an investigation, it was found that the ceramic casing in which the memory chips were encased had become contaminated with very small amounts of uranium from an old uranium mill further up the Green River in Colorado, where the ceramic casing material came from. By this time, the miniaturization of MOSFETs which made up the DRAM was small enough so that a single alpha particle emitted from the uranium could create electron hole pairs in the silicon and release enough free charge carriers to fill up the semiconductor well, the part of the chip that determined if the memory was set to a 1 or a 0. This could then flip from a 1 to a 0. This type of data corruption is called a single upset event or soft error and doesn't cause any permanent damage. The bit can be flipped back again. But if that bit controlled an essential part of a system, such as turning on or off a thruster or an engine, or reporting a critical piece of information, then the result might have a very real and drastic and possibly mission ending effect out in space. However, in space there can be much more damaging cosmic rays, which are not actually rays, but particles made from the nuclei of atoms stripped of their electron shells and fired out from supernovas and black holes, traveling at close to the speed of light. These can be the nuclei of hydrogen, helium, and the heaviest and most damaging iron. And if they hit a spacecraft, they can easily rip through the outer shielding and shower the interior with secondary radiation, including secondary electrons, bramstrelon or X-rays, and in some cases, gamma rays and even neutrons. If they hit a chip, they can cause much more damage by turning on parasitic transistors that exist near NP junctions that will stay on until the power is removed or the device burns out. They can also cause gate rupture and electric rupture. Any of these can cause the device to fail and compromise the mission. Both Voyager probes have been hit by suspected cosmic rays, leading to Voyager 2 sending back gibberish in 2010 and Voyager 1 going silent for five months more recently. If this would happen on Earth, at least the affected part could be replaced. But out in space, no one would be coming to fix it. Over the years, error correction has been built into spacefaring computers. This is also available here on Earth in things like ECC memory or error correcting code memory. This is a type of RAM which detects and corrects single bit memory errors. It adds extra bits to each data piece stored in memory, allowing the system to identify and fix errors caused by interference, radiation or other factors. But what about the CPU and other parts for data processing? Well here, methods like triple modular redundancy can be applied. Here, a single data input is fed into three identical logic circuits and the outputs of each are compared to each other. If one of them is different because of an error, that one is downvoted and the other two identical outputs are combined and used. This was expanded on in the Space Shuttle. It used four identical computers, all running the same code and in lockstep. Every three to four milliseconds, the output from each computer was compared to the others. And if there was a disagreement in the data, the majority vote would win, and the computer with the failed result would be deselected. A fifth backup computer ran alongside them with different software. And if all the four primary computers failed, the fifth one would take over the task. In all the missions of the space shuttle, the fifth backup computer was never used. But it's probably better to try and avoid an error from occurring in the first place and fix it later. So components in spacecraft are radiation hardened. In the case of memory chips and CPUs, this includes using insulating substrates like silicon on insulator or silicon on sapphire. Wide band gap semiconductors are also now being explored like gallium nitride and silicon carbide for radiation hardening. Spot shielding of chips can also be used to stop radiation from reaching the dye. This can include depleted boron to reduce neutron radiation. But building with triple modular redundancy increases the area size of the dye with no extra performance. The priority here is reliability above all else, including speed and computing power. This meant that computer systems built for space were one-off devices and very expensive to develop. 
and they were never made in quantities and lagged well behind their commercial counterparts in capability and performance. So trying to keep a cap on the costs and reap some of the benefits of the rapidly evolving CPU development, NASA set out in the 1990s to use radiation-hardened versions of commercial off-the-shelf components. The first of these to be developed was the RAD 6000, a radiation-hardened version of the IBM RISC single-chip CPU in 1995. This was superseded in 2001 by the RAD 750, based on the PowerPC 750 manufactured by IBM and Motorola, and which would be software compatible with the commercial version which was used in the Apple Power Macintosh and later Power Mac. The RAD 750 used 250 to 150 nanometer process with a clock speed of between 110 and 200 megahertz and could withstand a million RADs exposure, while the complete system with motherboard could withstand 100,000 RADs. Up until just a few years ago, nearly all the major space projects, including Curiosity and Perseverance rovers and the James Webb Space Telescope, used the RAD 750, which is now almost a 25-year-old design. This means that tasks that will be easy for a modern CPU to handle, like real-time hazard avoidance for the Mars rovers, would be too much for the aging RAD 750. In 2022, NASA announced that it had selected Microchip to develop a high-performance spaceflight CPU that could provide at least 100 times the computational capacity of current spaceflight computers with extremely low power consumption whilst withstanding the very harsh conditions of space. The radiation-hardened PIC64 HPSCRH, radiation-hardened, has eight RISC-V cores and a clock speed of up to 1 GHz, as well as dual-core lockstep operation, similar to that used by the Space Shuttle, but on processor cores rather than complete computers and it can withstand 100,000 rads of exposure. It's constructed on a 12 nanometer process using advanced FinFET materials and structures specifically designed and tested to resist total ionizing dose radiation damage. The chip is designed to give autonomous missions the local power processing to execute real-time tasks using AI for things like rover hazard avoidance on the moon's surface, something which on the Mars rovers had to be pre-planned and sent to the rovers as a set of maneuvers to perform, but could not react in real time to a rapidly changing mission condition. Software is another area where spaceflight computers vary from your average PC. Here, real-time operating systems at RTOS, such as VxWorks, are used with deterministic performance. This can guarantee how long a process will take to execute down to the microsecond. This is something which is extremely important when changing course in space, which requires precisely timed thruster and engine burns to accurately place the spacecraft in orbit around a planet or perform gravitational slingshots around a planet for deep space missions. So while today's space-based computers may well lack the raw performance of the latest Earth-based CPUs, like the Apollo guidance computer of nearly 60 years ago, they are here to do a specific job and in the most efficient, reliable and cost-effective ways possible in the harsh environment of space. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did then please thumbs up, share and subscribe and a big thanks go to all our patrons for their ongoing support.